So when we talk about building a prepared pantry, we talk a lot about having things that are shelf stable, right? Things that can be put on your shelf in your pantry and stored like your home canned foods, the canned foods that you buy from the store or from Azure or wherever you buy them from. But an important part of our food storage is also our freezer storage. Now these are obviously not things that are gonna stay for a super long time. It's obviously not long-term storage. It's obviously not things that you are putting in like a five gallon bucket and they're gonna stay for years and years and years. These are things that you're eating through. But when you are doing things like buying in bulk, this is a really important part of your food storage. We buy a lot of things in bulk or we just go to Costco and buy a few bags of you know, frozen vegetables or frozen strawberries or whatever it is. So today I'm gonna to take you through my freezer storage and talk about what we preserve there, why we do it, and how we manage that inventory and even how we take some of those frozen things and turn them into canned goods. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jess from the blog silenceage.com and here we talk about cultivating your home. And a big part of our home is our prepared pantry and buying food in bulk for my family of seven. So as a family of seven, we have about five freezers, I think. One, two, three, four, five. I think we have five. <laughs> um, we have five freezers. We have um, one upright freezer and we have a few chest freezers. And we have so many freezers because partly buying in bulk for my large family is cheaper. Number two, we also buy our meat in bulk. So we will buy like a whole hog or we will get from a local farm like a half or a full share of beef. And being able to store that, you need a lot of freezer space and it really helps us to bring our per pound cost down for meat and the meat is just way better quality than if you would just buy it at the store. It also really helps us when we're buying things like fruit in bulk, with whether we buy it from Azure or we get it from a local, you know, like a local orchard or something. It also helps us to preserve the garden harvest. Some of the things I really love to preserve from the garden harvest and put in the freezer are things like zucchini and carrots and greens like spinach and kale and Swiss chard. Celery is another one that we preserve from our harvest. So you can take your garden harvest or if you're foraging, we have a whole side of our house that's filled with black wild raspberries. And if I had enough to preserve, if my kids didn't eat through them so quickly, um, we would preserve them and we could put them in the freezer. That's a really great way. You can make jams, you can make salsa, you can make bone broth. Like there's so many things that if you're not ready to start canning or if you don't have time to can it, um, preserving it by freezing is just a really, really easy way. As a larger family, storing and preserving things in the freezer is an important part of our food storage. So I'm going to kind of show you some of the things that we keep in our freezers and the kind of things that we buy in bulk that we will freeze. If you've watched any of my grocery hauls, you will probably recognize some of the things that you're seeing in the freezer here. We don't produce any of our own meats, but we do purchase meat in bulk from local farms. We are currently waiting for our next um, beef share. So we don't actually have a lot of beef, like we are super low on beef, but we have several freezers. And so um, this one obviously is pretty full right now, but the beef will, um, we'll kind of have to rearrange some of the things in the freezers. I like to keep some beef in this freezer. This freezer sits in our outbuilding um, where my husband has his office. So it's kind of the freezer that I go into not as regularly. So things in this freezer are the things that I'm not needing to use every single day or like an extra. Like we have one of these, if you watched my Costco haul, I got these at Costco pretty recently, um, but I got two of them. So one of them was kept inside and this one is kept outside. So I'll show you some of the things that we keep in here. I am not the most organized, as you might see. Some people are like super organized and they'll like keep beef on one shelf and you know fruit on another and I am just not like that. Plus I have kids that will put things out in the freezer for me and you know, it just gets to be a mess. <laughs> so I don't stress about it, I don't worry about it. So I'll show you some of the things that I like to keep in the freezer. So we've got some peas here, 
that are from Costco. We have frozen bananas. We use a lot of frozen bananas. Fresh bananas do not last very long in our house. So I like to keep um, frozen bananas that I buy in bulk um, from Azure and then I separate them out into gallon Ziploc bags. And then we'll take one in at a time and put it in our um, you know, fridge freezer in the kitchen. But we use these for smoothies, baking, whatever, you know, whatever we want to make. These cherry tomatoes are from the garden this year. I always keep uh, cherry tomatoes in the freezer and then just use them for cooking throughout the year. I buy bread in bulk from Azure. I buy gluten-free bread. I do not make gluten-free bread. I have not mastered that. So I will buy this cinnamon raisin bread and this Rudy's gluten-free bread. There's only two of us that have to eat gluten-free bread. So I do not buy this every month. I probably only buy this every maybe three months, maybe. The cinnamon bread we eat a little more of because I like it a lot. I do not eat a lot of bread. I am one of the two Whoops. in our house that needs to be gluten-free. Um, my son, who is gluten-free, he eats a lot more bread than I do. And so he will um, eat this, but he doesn't eat tons of bread. He's more like corn tortillas than bread. I also have these um, gluten-free bagels that I got from Azure that are all right. They're not the best, but they are a decent um, bagel option. We do make bread, but I also buy it um, in bulk from Azure so that I have it on hand or just, you know, when we need quick meals, then I just don't have any homemade bread. We buy like one of these a month and then we'll just keep whatever extras out here. Sometimes my kids will forget that it's out here and <laughs> we end up with more for a longer time. When I find grapes, especially organic grapes on sale, I buy them. Um, I recently bought a bunch from Azure and I um, freeze them. So my kids love frozen grapes. They like to just eat them kind of like candy. So I will just buy them whenever I can um, in, in bulk from Azure or like just whenever they're on sale at the store. I'll just buy a bunch of them at a time, um, freeze them up in gallon bags, and then they my kids will just eat them as they are or we'll add them to smoothies or something so there's more frozen bananas back here i think that is a very old bag of mozzarella cheese that's frozen more frozen bananas a bag of sweet potato fries from costco that i sent a child out to find the other day for dinner and no one could find and here it is right in the front okay so i freeze a lot of fruit i've got these peaches that um are from these peaches are from Azure. These peaches are actually from last year, and so I gotta pull them in because you can see they are definitely needing to be used, but they last a long time. Um, we will probably pull these in and make smoothies with them. We eat a lot of smoothies, especially in cross-country season, which we are in right now. Um, so I have some I have some peaches coming from Azure soon, so we'll be able to replace these in the freezer. They really only have gluten-free donuts at Aldi a couple times a year. So I usually buy a couple boxes and stick them in the freezer just as a fun treat for something. I don't know. I don't have like a plan for those. These are from Costco. More bread, more gluten-free bagels. Um, these back here are whole chickens. One of them, that one's from Azure. This one is from our local farm more frozen grapes back there these peppers are from azure i buy them in bulk when they are on sale there is a bag of sausages pork sausages um from azure this these are from azure too i also buy these when they are on sale all right down here i've got more frozen bananas when I buy the frozen bananas, I think it's like 20 pounds or something. So I split them up into these bags and they last quite a while. Um, this is regular bread, gluten-free bread, celery. That's from last year. I think I forgot that that was out here. So I need to um, pull that inside, use that. That will be perfect for soups. I don't think this is celery that I grew. I think I bought a big box from Azure and chopped it up and um, stored it in the freezer. 
I dehydrated some, but I realized I tend to not use the dehydrated celery. So I will probably just freeze it in the future. All right, down here, it looks like there is a brisket that I need to use. I have literally never cooked this with brisket in my life. So I guess I have to figure that out. I got some soup bones. Cherries from Costco. More peaches from last year. I did not realize we had so many. I'm going to pull these in and use them. Let's see. Meat from our last beef share. Chicken liver. I actually really love chicken liver. <laughs> these are the scallops I got in my most recent Costco haul. These are peaches from this year. Bananas. Hash browns. I think I have just maybe like three bags of these. I got these from Azure. I don't really buy these very often. I keep a few on hand for, we have like a family cheesy hash brown, you know, like a cheesy potato casserole recipe that we make. And we make it for like holidays and stuff. So I like these in that casserole a lot better than if I were to like cut the hash browns. But when I make my own hash browns, like when I just fry them up in a skillet, I like to just make the hash browns myself, like cut them up. And that is my freezer telling me it's been open for too long. All right, so I've got that. I've got a little bit. I think these are like bacon ends. Some more meat in there. A few more peppers. Okay, down here we've got a little more gluten-free bread. We've got these corn tortillas. These freeze really, really well. I buy these in bulk from Azure, or sometimes I will buy them, like sometimes I'll buy them from the local grocery store, but I like that I can get organic from Azure. So I buy like, I don't even know how many I buy at a time, but I bought like a huge box. And I like that they only have a few in each package so that when I bring them in, I'm not having to like thaw out like a hundred at a time. It's just a few at a time so that they just like last well, like for a long time. This is a brand of gluten-free bread that we bought from Azure in bulk and we did not like at all. <laughs> my, uh, my son didn't like them and I don't really like them. So I think we'll probably end up using them for like a French toast casserole or something because you won't really notice as much that it doesn't taste very good. <laughs> Covered in eggs and cream cheese. Um, and then here we mostly right now have gluten-free bread. Clearly I don't need any gluten-free bread. Grapes. This is actually a bag of dog food that belongs to someone else. My brother-in-law, he left it here. And then butter. I usually keep quite a bit of frozen butter. I buy it in bulk from Azure. Um, I have some in another freezer right now. It's not, I don't just have this one. All right, here's a look at one of our other freezers. We like to buy these Stacy's organic um, whole wheat tortillas from Azure. We buy them in bulk. My kids love these and they freeze really, really well and they thaw out really well. If you need them quickly, you can like thaw them out in the oven on a low temperature and just like separate them out. You can even broil them in the oven, um, like kind of on low and then just watch it and like one by one separate them as you're doing it. I usually do it in the oven, like on a low temperature on like a regular bake setting and um, it usually only takes like 15 minutes or something to thaw them all out. So we've got a bunch of those in here. We've got some bread. Down here, we keep our bulk pork. Um, we don't have a ton left over right now. We kind of mostly have like bigger hams and things. I think we're all out of bacon and we have that and like pork sausage. So I'm not going to dig all the way down here, but down here I know we've got a little bit of fish. We've got some pork sausage. We have um, some milk that we buy from Azure as like a backup supply for our raw milk when the raw milk is low. There's that. And then a bunch of butter that I got from Azure. So down in the bottom I think is mostly just milk and pork sausage and ham. I want to show you one of my favorite books to help you if you want to start preserving things by freezing. This book is called Freeze Fresh. It is by my friend Crystal Schmidt. 
She's over at Whole Fed Homestead. You can find her over there on YouTube and on Instagram. She sent me this book last year, I think it was, when she put it out, and it is so, so good. It walks you through how to preserve things. Um, it walks you through not just like, let's just put this in the freezer, but actual like recipes for things in the freezer. And it is so detailed and a really, really great resource to have on your shelf. All right, here is another one of our freezers inside the house. We've got a few more peppers, some frozen fruit. This one's from Costco. This is just from Aldi. We've got some blueberries. I bought these blueberries in bulk from a local, um, like a local farm had brought them in from Michigan. And so I bought those. And so I have several bags of those. These chickens I got from Azure. I got a whole case of frozen chicken. This is that milk that I freeze from Azure as like a backup. More chicken. I pretty much only buy whole chicken because it tends to be cheaper to do it that way. And then I'll just cook one chicken. Um, and then I'll just cook the whole chicken in the Instant Pot. I will make some bone broth and I will then use whatever leftover chicken we have for a second meal or just my family will eat them as leftovers. But usually I make a second meal like um, pot pie or um, you know, like fajitas or something that doesn't require like a ton of chicken, like a chicken is added in because with five kids, we don't tend to have like a ton of extra. Um, the next day after we eat a whole chicken. All right, down here, I think we have some more peaches. Oh, these are from 2021. I guess we need to eat these before we eat the 2022 peaches. They'll still be totally fine though. More peaches, looks like some ribs. This is some kind of <laughs> gluten-free. This is a clam chowder that I found at Costco that's gluten-free. Um, I actually bought it at Costco.com, like, the online website that you can order groceries from. It's the first clam chowder I've seen that, <laughs> that's gluten-free, which is why I bought it, because I don't know. I just like clam chowder. So there's some random meats, pork chops, some bacon ends, more um, beef liver. Yum. I love liver, actually. Uh, these are from Aldi. Yeah, so just random meats down here. I could probably do to be a little bit more organized about this so I could find things better. But um, I've got some bone broth that I always forget about because it's frozen and I normally just use it right away. Um, since this is from 2021, I probably should use this. Clearly, <laughs> I need a better organizational system so I do not lose things in the bottom of my freezer. So with these older peaches, I probably, I'm just gonna take them and cook them up and make them into jam in the next couple weeks. Especially since I know I have some beef coming in October, I wanna make room in the freezers. So I probably will take that and cook that up. I tend to do that anytime we have like bulk produce or bulk um, meat coming in and I wanna make a little room, I'll just cook up a bunch of, um, like I made a bunch of cranberry jam, like I made a bunch of cranberry preserves and I made blueberry jam the last time we had bulk beef. I just took whatever was left in our freezer that um, maybe had been there a while like these peaches or um, just whatever I needed to like make space for things. Um, so I do that a lot with fruit or if we have like, these are not um, spinach, but like a, a bag of spinach like this, the last time we needed to make space in our freezer, I took a bunch of bags of frozen spinach and dehydrated it. And then I can use that powder and I can add it to like smoothies and stuff. So it's a good idea when you're looking through your freezer to also think like, how can I make this shelf stable if I need to make room in my freezer for something else? Or if I just wanna use up the things that are a little bit older like this and maybe don't leave your peaches in the freezer for two years. That would also be a good <laughs> freezer tip for you. Okay, this is the little freezer that is with our extra fridge in our basement. This one has mostly like veggies and fruits. So we've got some spinach. These I buy from Azure. I buy them when they are on sale. Um, I do grow a lot of spinach, um, but we go through it really quickly when I'm growing it. Sometimes I dehydrate my harvest and sometimes I freeze it. I don't know. I don't have any currently from 
the stuff that I grew in the spring because I went through it all. So I've got this frozen from Azure. I've got some more peas. Again, these are a lot cheaper at Costco, like the big bag of peas that I have in my other freezer, but I buy it sometimes when it's on sale if I'm not going to Costco at the time because I don't go to Costco every month. Strawberries from Aldi. This is gluten-free cheesecake from Aldi. I buy it when, like, I usually buy a few boxes when they have it, um, like, once or twice a year. So, just because it's kind of a fun gluten-free treat. Mostly for me. <laughs> uh, beets. I love beets, and I like that these are super convenient. This, to me, is a convenience food that I will throw this in a meal um, like roasted veggies or if you're frying up potatoes these are really great to put in um, you can also dehydrate these and make them into like chips if you need space in the freezer and you also can throw these in a smoothie so a lot of these things my kids will throw these foods into smoothies the not the peas but <laughs> the spinach and the beets and the fruit are great for smoothies we make a lot of smoothies we don't do a lot of convenience foods um, like frozen convenience foods this is one that my husband asked for at one point my kids really like these There's some rice cauliflower which is not really a thing that we normally buy I don't know I think I bought it once at Costco and I don't know I probably won't buy it again it's just not something we eat very often so there's a little bit left in there I don't even remember what I did with it what I made So then these are more, um, fr more fruits and veggies from Costco, an extra milk. That's an actual milk from the farm that I froze. The best way I found to thaw milk and use it um, is to put it in lukewarm water and let it sit for however long it takes to thaw it out. If you're thawing out an entire gallon like that, it's gonna take a little longer than this smaller size. But you just put it in, um, like put the whole thing sitting in lukewarm water and then just kind of shake it every time you walk past it. You do need to use it really quickly after it's thawed. So you can use it to make, you know, to cook with. You can use it for drinking or cereal or whatever, make oatmeal with. Um, I don't really recommend using it to make yogurt. I've tried that before and it does not really turn out very well, but it's really great for smoothies and um, for cooking and baking and all of those things. So because we buy our milk at the farm normally, I started buying these from Azure to kind of have a back stock for if the farm is low or if anything happens we can't get to the farm that we're not totally out of milk. Um, and this has really come in handy a few times, like the one time that our refrigerator door got left open while we were gone for a few days and it was like 90 degrees and it was terrible. So we lost all of our farm milk, but we still had some of this. So that was really, really nice. I also just have some extra yeast that I have in here. That's just from Costco, some more peppers, blueberries. I think this is just some, in not instant, but like ground coffee. We don't really drink ground coffee, but it's in here. I think somebody gave it to us. I don't know. Um, and then a random bag of few taquitos that we got from Costco. That's not something we buy a lot. It's kind of um, like a like a special food, like for a treat. Because taquitos are, are really easy to make if you want to make your own. But like I said, we don't have a lot of convenience foods, but occasionally. So last year when I needed to make some room in my freezer for some bulk beef, I took a bunch of fruit out and I made it into, or I canned it, I preserved it. Not the peaches, but the cranberries and I think there's strawberries. So I made like strawberry sauce. I preserved these cranberries. We have really hard water. That's what's on the top. Um, and I think I also made some cranberry jam and I made some blueberry preserves too, but I think we may have eaten all of those. This is just a really great way to take something from your freezer when you need to make room. You can make it into like a jam or you can just can it up and you can preserve it that way. And so then it'll last a little bit longer and um, it is shelf stable. So you don't have to worry about if your power goes out. One thing that you really want to have on hand if you're going to be freezing things is 
freezer bags. So we get these gallon sized freezer bags. The brand to me doesn't really matter as long as they are actually freezer bags. That is the important thing. Freezer bags are going to help you retain the quality of your food better. You don't want to just use like regular baggies because they are not as thick. So this plastic is thicker. It's going to keep out the freezer burn longer. You can also vacuum seal your foods. I tend to not do this just because I'm a little bit lazy about it and this is easier. <laughs> but if you want something to last for a really long time, vacuum sealing it is really helpful and it just keeps out freezer burn. So if you're noticing your foods are getting freezer burn, definitely try vacuum sealing. I will see if I can link the one that I have in the description, but I just have an inexpensive one. I don't have like a fancy food saver or anything. I just have a really cheap vacuum sealer that I think I got on Amazon. So if I find it, I'll link it in the description below. Make sure you're labeling the things in your freezer. When I went through my freezer, as you saw, there were things that were in there that were from last year, or even I found a couple things from the year before. I want to make sure that I'm getting those things out, that I'm using them or putting them in, you know, making them shelf stable, getting them out of the freezer. I don't want to keep them in there. I don't want to like use the new things before I use the old things. So teach your family that that's an important thing that maybe I have like forgotten to teach my kids that they have to get the 2021 things before they use the 2023 peaches. <laughs> But make sure that you're telling your family that, make sure you're labeling things because otherwise you're gonna end up wasting food that you otherwise could have eaten. The other thing that is great to have when you are freezing things like vegetables, um, like zucchini and carrots especially, or like yellow squash, is to have a muffin tin. So what you wanna do then is you wanna shred up your zucchini or your carrots or your, your yellow squash and put them into muffin tins and then you take the whole muffin tin and you put it into the freezer. Then once it's frozen or mostly frozen, you just pop those little pucks out and you put them in a little baggie and you zip it up and then you have little pucks of zucchini and carrots. My zucchini this year, I got one zucchini from six plants. I don't know what happened. That is like so impossibly rare with zucchini. Usually zucchini you get like an overabundance and so it's really great to have um, to be able to store it to be able to put it in the freezer this year. I don't know. <laughs> zucchini did not love me this year but we've done that in previous years and it's been so helpful then you can just pop out a puck or two and put it in sauce like I will put it in spaghetti sauce or whatever I'm making you can use it to make bread. We like to freeze things like bananas. If we ever have any leftover, which we very rarely do, we'll, I'll peel them, put them in a bag, and you can use them in a smoothie or you can use them, you know, thaw them out and make banana bread with them. We don't have um, a freeze dryer. I know it's really hot right now in like the preparedness and the homesteading um, community to have a freeze dryer. We just, that hasn't been a priority for us to spend our money on that, but we do have a dehydrator and I have definitely taken things from the freezer thawed them out and dehydrated them to prolong their life and just to like get them out of the freezer and put into like a shelf stable um, condition. If you are looking for a good freezer, you can, of course, you can go buy them new. We have one or two that we have purchased new. The others we have had used. We found one on Facebook Marketplace. We found one from a friend who was moving and didn't want to take it with them. They are really easy to find usually on Facebook Marketplace. Or even if you just need a little bit of freezer space and maybe you want an extra fridge, like we have an extra fridge that we keep like milk and produce and things in, um, you can get, you know, an extra fridge on Facebook Marketplace and then you have that little bit of extra freezer space too. But you don't have to buy brand new. You can definitely go and find them on Facebook Marketplace really inexpensively. Watch for them, you know, in the summer out of rummage sales or whatever. But usually on Facebook Marketplace, that's a great way to find them. Well, if you haven't already, make sure you head over to siloandsage.com slash prepare and grab my free guide to a prepared pantry. Now that guide is not talking about freezer things. It's not talking about food you'd keep in the freezer. It is talking about shelf stable foods, but that's a big part. It's actually a huge part of building a prepared pantry is having foods that are shelf stable. If you want to see more of my videos about building a prepared pantry, I will link the playlist below and at the end of the video. So make sure you stick around and click on that playlist and watch those videos so you can see some more tips about building a prepared pantry and doing it on a budget and buying in bulk, which are all things I love to do and talk about. If you found this helpful, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you soon in another video. And in the meantime, keep cultivating your home friends. Bye.